We are now going to go to Chris Ferry, who works at UTS, a researcher in physics, but also a famous author of a hugely best-selling piece called Quantum Physics for Babies. Chris, round of applause, everybody. Hello, children. Um, so let's give a round of applause for our previous guest, Ziggy and Albert. Very good. So as we do on uh, every Friday, we're going to have a story time. So this story is called Quantum Physics for Babies. Let's just turn the music down a bit there. Okay. Uh, Tony, please take your, your, your filter off, your, your face filter, yeah, okay. Children, put, put your cameras on, very good. Let's get started. This is a ball. You can see the shape is round. This ball has energy. Oh, oh there's it. Tony? No, no, it's Phil. Phil, do you have a question? Yeah. Can I go to the toilet? <laughs> yes, yes, you may, Phil. Go ahead. Thank you, Phil. This is a ball. This ball has zero energy, you see? This one, it's on the ground. No energy, it's a sad ball. But all balls are made of atoms. There are neutrons and protons. Okay, children, can you point to the protons? Just touch your screen. Go ahead. Very good. And electrons. The electrons, they're out there having all of the fun. Look at those little electrons. Something special about electrons I want to share with you. An electron can be here or here. Can you guess where else an electron might be? Up there. Very good. It can be up here. But an electron cannot be here. An electron cannot be here. All of the electrons have energy. Look at that. One, two, three, with energy. This electron has the most energy. And this electron has the least energy. But there are no electrons with zero energy. And there's no electrons that just sit around. The energy is quantized. Now I want everyone to say that with me. Energy is quantized. Very good, very good. An electron can take energy to jump up and it must give energy to fall down. This amount of energy is a quantum. Can you point to the energy? Point to the quantum of energy. Just touch it on your screen. Very good. Now you are a quantum physicist. The end. Okay, very good, children. Very good. Okay, so now we're going to read Programming Quantum Computers. Let's begin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, Chris. Round of applause, everybody. 
fantastic stuff. Chris, what inspired you to do this? Where did the idea come from? Well, I was, uh, I ha we had our third child and I had read Goodnight Moon about 10,000 times. <laughs> and I thought, uh, why not kill two birds with one stone? I'll get my, my, my reading out of the way and, and read to the children at the same time. And so I, and up I your publication rate as well. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's citable, please. <laughs> <laughs> There's people on chat wanting to know where do they get it? Oh, you can get the book anywhere. Um, I would suggest go now that things are open up in Sydney. Anyway, go to your local bookstore and then pick up a copy. There's a wonderful uh, Australian owned online bookstore called Booktopia. And of course, someone put in Dimix. Um, but if you must, if you feel like you need to help Jeff Bezos send someone else into space, then you can get it on Amazon. Oh, yes, there's an entire series. So I don't want to step off camera, but there's now actually 60 books in the series. Crikey. <laughs> All written by yourself? I, uh, sometimes I write books with co-authors when it's not my area of expertise. Uh, which is a bit, uh, I think it's a, not very common to have co-authors on, on children's books. Of course, sometimes you have authors and illustrators, but to have co-authors is, is, is not common. But I guess as a scientist, I'm always used to collaborating. <laughs> and I guess, yeah, yeah, there's a couple of skill sets you're blending there. Mm. And, and so is it uh, keeping your three children in the manner to which they want to become accum accustomed? <laughs> Have you made a million dollars from it? Uh, I don't think I've made a million dollars from it. It's, I, when I get a lot of messages from scientists out there, so if there's any scientists out there, unfortunately, we can't co-author a new book, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. It's, it's not a very lucrative business. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the arts generally. <laughs> and I'm going to include astronomy in that is not that, uh, that not the big way to, to riches unless you get to the very top. All right. At what stage do you introduce equations? Asked David Wynn. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's in, uh, that's in volume two. <laughs> <laughs> Alongside the quantum computing. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Another round of applause for Chris Berry. <laughs>